Hi there YouTube and welcome to another vlog. Um, if I sound a bit out of breath that's because I am. Okay today's vlog is a little bit of an experiment because what I'm trying out today is my new Rode Wireless Go um, audio wireless audio system. This is obviously the uh, transmitter which I've got this mic plugged into. It's also got an in, a, a built-in mic, but I think I'd rather use this one than have this sort of clipped up here like this. Um, and then there's a neat little receiver that clips to the hot shoe on the camera, and it's nice and small. Um, and then you've got a little cable that links the receiver, uh, and it goes into the um, mic input on the camera. If this works out okay, that means I no longer have to faff around um, syncing audio when I edit video. Because uh, I usually record my audio separately. Uh, either that or I have a great big clumsy mic on top of the camera, which, um, unless you're standing fairly close, well, it doesn't pick up that well, does it, if you're too far away? Whereas this, uh, I'm not sure what the range is, but the, the reviews that I've seen, I've seen people walking sort of 20, 30 meters away from their camera and it still works. Now I don't usually do that, so yeah, like I say, if this works out okay, it's gonna make my editing life a lot easier and hopefully the audio quality a lot better. Now, let's talk about where I am today. I came here last year, the back end of last year. Um, and I'd not been here before. It's a part of Dewarstone Wood, um, which I frequent quite often, but it's a part of the wood that I'd never been to up until the end of last year. And I promised I'd come back. So here I am. And we're pretty much into spring now. It's getting towards the end of February. It's actually quite warm today. Got a nice bit of sunshine. There's also some cloud, which is a blessing because the other day I went out and uh, all I ended up with was really harsh shadows and crap photos. So hopefully today it's gonna be a lot better. I wonder if you notice when I turn away from the camera that the audio doesn't change because it's picking up directly from this, this microphone here. Where is it? There, that one there, that's clipped to my shirt. So, you can see some squirrels over there. So let's have a wander around and see what we can find. Such a magical place this is. Look at it, look around me, look. Beautiful wild trees. It's not a plantation uh, woodland. This is proper wild forest stroke woodland. You might be able to hear the river in the background. That's right down in the bottom of the valley. Don't know if you can see it down there but yeah this is a beautiful wild place and I can see I can see already loads and loads of trees that just look amazing so hopefully they are going to make great photographs we shall see yeah this is a pretty special place if you're into woodland photography, you should put this on your list of places to come, if indeed you can get down here. Well, I think I've found my first composition and looking at this tree, I think it could actually make two compositions. 
I think I can get two photographs out of this one. It's absolutely amazing. As twisty, gnarly, uh, ancient oak trees go, and I'm assuming that's what it is, an oak tree, I'm going to look stupid if it's not, aren't I? Oh, there it is. Yeah, as twisty, gnarly oak trees go, this is a pretty good one. Right, I'm going to get set up, and I'm going to uh, take a picture of it. Well, as luck would have it, just as I set up, the sun's come through, blinding sunshine, casting lots of horrible shadows all over my composition. Come on clouds, come back. There are still a few around. Right. I'm gonna take a shot because seem to come back okay so let's have a look what we've got going on here so that's my tree there it's a beautiful oak tree um, and well it's just twisty gnarly goes all over the place so you've got this lovely limb that comes out to the right you've got these two limbs that bend over to the left and then the uh, it twists up into the top of the frame and there's another tree directly behind it that's covered in ivy. Um, now, what I've done, I'll just zoom out a little bit to show you what I mean. As you can see here, in the top right of the frame, we've got some sky. I don't want that, so I'm zooming in to cut that out. And this tree here, I'm probably going to crop there. So that we don't get that in. Um... So, let's just zoom in, show you what I'm focusing on. So I'm, trying, I'm focusing pretty much dead centre of the tree. Manually focusing, as always. My F11. And... Uh, Underexposing by a whole stop, so that gives me a quarter of a second at F11. My ISO is down to 50. And I've got a two second timer on. And there we go. So for the other composition that I talked about, um, it's probably going to require the long lens. Oh, sunlight again, isn't it? Never mind, I'm going to switch lenses. Um, and then I'll show you this other composition that I'm seeing uh, from the exact same tree, from the exact same spot, without having to move. I hope it works. Not silly if it don't work. Right, what I'm going to do now that I've uh, framed up this shot and uh, I've got everything in focus, 
is I'm going to video this scene with this camera so that you can see what I'm looking at. Okay, so put my finger in there. So it's got we've got like this uh, sort of looks like an eye, I think. Evokes in my imagination an eye, and then through that eye, it takes you into the rest of the forest and all the trees and branches and limbs of trees all sort of converging and crisscrossing together. And let's kill that video because the light right now is spot on. Cloud, soft light, beautiful. ISO 50, third of a second, F18, so I want as much depth as I can get in the photograph. Two second timer. There we go. Two compositions from one tree. How's that? Right, what I'm going to do now is, it doesn't look too treacherous, so I'm going to try and walk down quite steep though but I'm going to try and walk down uh, to get down by the river and see if there's anything down there that I can find that's of interest to photograph. edge now and I have to say it is just magical down here it really is I just can't believe it many many times I've, I've uh, walked along that side of the river which is it's not quite as accessible some parts of it because the banks are so steep and treacherous there's only certain sections of the river that you can get next to and I've Look down from up on that bank up there and thought I'd love to get down there. Look at those trees across the river, they, they look magnificent. But never ever ventured on this side of the river. So glad I have because it was just magical. I could spend I could just sit here all day. I could put a chair right here now and just stay here. Until it gets dark.
So my first shot down here is a bit of a no-brainer, really. I've got this amazing uh, cascade of like little waterfall here, and then we've got this beautiful tree just arching over the river, covered in moss. We've got foreground with the rocks. We've got moss all over the rocks. It's just a beautiful scene, a beautiful Devonshire wild scene. It kind of encapsulates everything about wild Devon and the beautiful woodlands and rivers that we have down here. So I've put my polarizer on just to take any reflection off the water. Um, and the water's beautifully clear as well. It's gorgeous. Um, now the polarizer has kind of enhanced the greens a little bit in the trees. But there really is one main tree here that's, um, that's dominating the scene. And that's this tree on that's kind of leaning out over the river. Yeah, I like this. I think this is going to be good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to focus bang in the middle of where the cascade comes down. So I'm going to zoom in to 100% there. And then I'm going to And then I'm going to focus right in on that water till it's absolutely pin sharp. Oh, and look at the light coming through now. It's too harsh now. Look, look how harsh the light's gone now. I've got shadows all over the place. I'm going to have to wait for that to calm down a little bit before I take this shot. I don't want great big shadows all over the place. And it's made me too bright on that camera now. If only I hadn't faffed around, I could have got this shot by now. Never mind. I can see a cloud up there. It'll go in a minute. In your own time. Have you ever done that and you say, like, oh, I'm not in any rush, and then you get impatient? I do that a lot. So while I'm waiting for the light to play ball, and for the... Um, that's better for the clouds to come over and um, block out the sun a little bit, or at least soften it a bit. I don't want it to be completely blocked out, but softened would be nice. I can have a wander up here and uh, see what else we can find. Because it is a fantastic place. So I've left all my gear set up down there. Look, look at this beautifulness down here, look. So there could be lots of compositions down here. I'll spend enough time down here and have a good look around. I just want that sun to get softened by the cloud. Then I can grab this shot and move on. Actually, I think it's doing that just now. So I'm gonna get back to my camera and grab this shot.
Right, I'm going to call the video there. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked the images as well. Um, I didn't take any more images when I went further up that trail there because the, the light's really harsh. Um, it comes in and out occasionally, but the sky's getting clearer, so the light's not quite right, really. Um, but I saw enough to... Um, Hang on, I'll just uh, brighten that up a bit. Yeah, I saw enough up there to um, definitely make it worthwhile coming back. So again, thank you for joining me. Um, please subscribe if you haven't done already. Uh, give us a like as well, because that helps. Leave a comment down below, because I love answering all your comments and reading them. And I will see you in the next video.